So good morning. Welcome to this time of worship with Newark United Methodist Church, a congregation with open hearts, open minds, and open arms. We welcome and affirm you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, regardless of your race, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, social or economic status, physical and mental ability, or religious affiliation. We are all God's beloved children. Come give thanks to God who's good, who has heard our cries for help, gathered us together from the far reaches of the earth and delivered us from our own undoing. Let us tell of our Redeemer's deeds with songs of joy. So we begin this morning with a song, Hallelujah, Your Love is Amazing. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, your love indeed makes us sing. We are so grateful for the way that you come into our lives, for the way that even though we don't even know it, we know and trust that you are working. You are showing us how we might faithfully live, how we might do good works for which you have created us in Christ our Lord. May you find in our time of worship that we are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. May you find in our time of worship that we, your people, indeed love you with our full being, and we love our neighbors as well, just as equally. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I have two readings for us. The reason being that the Gospel of John makes reference to content from the text for Numbers. So we're going to hear from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9 first, and then we're going to hear from the Gospel of John. You might notice, if you're familiar with the Gospel of John, that John 3, verses 14 to 21 will include that very familiar John 3, 16 line. Uh, so listen now for the living word of God. First from Numbers, chapters 21, 4 through 9. From Mount Or. They set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. 
people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. And now from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And Mo, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Spirit of God has been present in the reading and hearing of these words. Thanks be to God. We are continuing with stumbling blocks to a 5G faith life. Today, dissatisfaction. Let me uh, stop the share here so I can see y'all and uh, go from there. So, friends, today I, uh, I, I come to you that um, with a sermon based on two texts that focus on God's redemptive work through time. That first text is from, from the Old Testament uh, that speaks of how God acted to save those folks who were wandering in the wilderness. Well, Actually, who are moving through a wilderness time so they might grow into the people of God that they had uh, been saved to become. So the second text, the one from John, is, is a text about redemption as well, about how God has loved us in this world so that we might know God's saving work in our lives now and through eternity. That's the nutshell of those two texts. What I want to talk about in relation to the text today is this idea of impatience and dissatisfaction. Now, this last week, I found myself, actually over the last few weeks, I found myself growing more and more impatient. Impatient, wanting for us to get back to a life and time where we can see each other. Dissatisfied with this time of being apart. When I was thinking about the text this week, I was thinking um, about all the different ways 2019, well, 2020 and 21, the COVID time that year, um, has impacted our lives. So I sent out a, a little email to uh, my Facebook groups. I have two. One is a United Methodist clergy women's group. So the clergy women from all across the denomination can be part of it. And the other is a clergy group from Eastern Pennsylvania, my home conference. I asked them if they could use a word to describe COVID times, specifically words that began with the letters D-I-S, dis, okay? And so I wanna share with you how they described using dis words this wild ride of fear and illness and lingering effects and death 
that we've been on this last year. These words, I wonder if you were to think of a word yourself, what you might come up with. They include dismal, divisive, disturbing, disappointing. Others, disorienting, disenchanting, dis disconcerting, disbelief. Remember, we're talking about words that describe feelings you might have had in the last year. Or dysfunctional, disheartening, disgust, distrust, discomforting, disinformation, dissent, disjointed, discombobulating. I have to slow down to say that one. Disaster, dismantled, disease, dismaying. Have I hit your word yet? Disconnected, disingenuous, disassociate, disillusionment disinterested. I know there have been times in the last year that you know, I just things that would have interested me before they weren't there. Distressing, disengaged, dissonant, disunity, disrespectful, disagreeable. And the final six or seven dismayed, distanced, disjointed, dismal, divisive, disenchanted. I said that before. And one of the folks felt like they were being funny and it made me laugh. So it got a smiley face from me. Disney world is not what it used to be. Hey, begins with DIS, right? So yeah. That, that, so there's a lot of, uh, of words that describe ways that um, we are missing. We've lost or they're lacking in our lives in the last year. Um, you know, where we might have been engaged, we might have become disengaged, where we, we might have had hope, we might have become disillusioned a little bit along the way. How we connected with one another or didn't connect um, has changed our lives. I want you to know that not all of the words from this last year focused on sort of things that we lack. Instead, there were several that spoke to things that have happened that have enriched our lives. There's been time of discovery. How many new things did you learn this week? How many new ways of thinking and doing just in, not just this week, but throughout the last year? There have been new ways of discipling, of sharing um, the truth that is within us, the love of God that is within us with others and helping others to walk their path of, of following in the footsteps of Christ. Every single one of us in some way, shape, or form have done some type of discerning in the last year. We've tried to figure out maybe our work-life balance. Maybe we've tried to figure out our family and work-life balance because we've been in the house together, right? Kids aren't at school. How do you, how do you work, have to te be a teacher, and, and how do you carve out that, that quiet time from one another that maybe you need? Um, how do you balance your need for, for interaction with other people when you can't go out and talk with them. We've all done some form of discerning, maybe our own faith, where we haven't felt God nearly as close in the last year for whatever reason. And we try to discern what, what is going on here as we continue in our search to trust in God and, and to keep our eye on, on the way that God is leading us into new life. And then there's one last word, distinctive. We've talked a little bit about this, how this year, none of us had experienced uh, anything like it before. All of these things lead to a degree, a good amount of impatience out there in the world, all of that sense of lack or that sense of it's time to get moving. With a high degree of dissatisfaction has come along with that impatience. Dissatisfaction with our government, with the limitations we're still experiencing in our lives, with mask wearing, with the speed with which the vaccine is being distributed. Just think in your own life, where, where has dissatisfaction shown up, been present in the last year? And then think about how it's impacted your life. I'm gonna suggest that there are two basic ways that dissatisfaction can play out in our lives. 
one, it can drain us because all we're focusing on is the lack, the things we don't have, the disunity, the distance, the disenchantment, the disbelief. Or a second way dissatisfaction can impact us is it can motivate us to make changes for the better. Don't like the way the things are? Well, we can make be motivated to change to a new and different way of being and doing. We are in a wilderness time and we hear the story today of wilderness life. There was a parallel that really popped out with me with the numbers text. You see that ancient people being formed into God's people in the wilderness, they, um, they're near the end of their journey and they don't even know it. We're, we're all hoping we're near the end of the journey with COVID, right? But they're near the end of that journey. And they have just experienced an incredible high. They had commit, recommitted themselves to God. And they had experienced a victory over folks who had tried to, to attack them and destroy them. They were up here. And then in the next line, they're complaining about the food and water. How often does that happen in our lives? We're riding a, a pretty good, good experience, and then all of a sudden, it doesn't take long for us to go, well, this isn't right or that isn't right. These folks in their complaining didn't just complain about Moses and the leadership. For the first time, as they're nearing the end of their time in the wilderness, they complain against God, and there are consequences. We don't like stories with consequences. In this story, we hear a judgment made by God. We hear an action that's attributed to God. Um, serpents coming and biting at their heels. All very disturbing images. But in a season of Lent, it's, it's right that we would be thinking about what it'll mean if we choose a path other than the path of God. Judgment happens when we complain against God or turn our backs against God. Scripture does attest to that, Old Testament and New. This text, though, is really a text about God's redemptive work. When the people repent, when they cry out to God, they recognize their error and what they have done. God answers and makes a way for them to be restored. It's not the actual symbol of the snake on the stick. The rabbis all say it's, it's because holding it up made the people look up to God. There are so many unanswered and probable, probably unanswerable questions here in this text that if we take the story apart piece by piece, it, we'll, we'll lose our way. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to keep the story together. We'll keep it broad. As I retell this way of understanding it, think about your own faith journey. The story is a story of people liberated by God. Do you know yourself as a person liberated by God? Liberation always includes struggle and pain. Hate to say it, it requires change. It, freedom comes at a cost. Something's got to go for the freedom to come. Think about Christ on the cross. As they journey, as the people in this wilderness story journey and learn to live life in relationship with God, there are moments of trust and moments of trust, mistrust. There are moments of obedience and moments of disobedience. Remember, we're thinking about our own faith journey as well. There are moments of commitment and moments that require recommitment. They live their lives in a state of uncertainty on the move life changing uncontrollably. This last year certainly pointed to that. At times, they express their dissatisfaction with their situation. They romanticize their past lives in oppression. You ever look back at the past and think, oh, those days were great. But then when you really think about it, there were just pieces that you really miss. And there were other parts that just were not acceptable. The people in this wilderness tale only remember the parts where their bellies were full. 
They forget the abuse, the struggles, the death. They forget that God has set them free, has provided for them in the wilderness. They become dissatisfied with how their needs are being met. They're tired of the manna, the God-given provision, and they grumble. Dissatisfaction can lead us to do that as well, to grumble. Humankind has a propensity to not be satisfied, even when all of our needs are met. Think about the story of the serpent in the garden. Humanity had total care, everything it needed. And yet they still had straying eyes. That boundary that God set for them in their lives, they still wanted that other thing. In such times, in wilderness times, when we're wandering and things seem out of control, when we're lacking things that were familiar to us. Dissatisfaction can be a stumbling block to our 5G faith life. We'll, we will seek out fellowship with that which destroys life instead of fellowship of fellow followers of Christ. We'll question whether seeking out opportunities to grow in Christ are really worth it. Or they can just be put off to another day. Our care for one another, for creation, for neighbors slip when we're only focusing on what we lack. God's grace, yeah, we'll acknowledge it, but we don't necessarily live into it, the full potential of it. When we channel our giftedness to more self-serving ways. Dissatisfaction, though, although it can literally lead us off a path of 5G faith, also has another side. It doesn't just have the potential to be a stumbling block. It can also be a motivator to a stronger faith. We sense something isn't right. And we decide we want to do something about that. We sense a hole within us and we seek to fill it instead with the things of God, with God's love and God's way of, of a sacrificial service to one another. The Gospel of John draws a direct comparison between the Sabbath work of God with the wilderness people and Jesus on the cross, our Savior of this group of wilderness people. Nicodemus in the story has come looking for answers. And I wonder if it isn't dissatisfaction with the way things are that nudged him to go seek out that, that sign doer to seek out Jesus. In their exchange, we hear the words, for God so loved the world. We are told God doesn't leave us to the destructive consequences of our own decisions not to trust God. Here's an important fact. Trust isn't something we do here or here in the Gospel of John. Trusting God means actually doing God's will. It's active, participatory. The good news is that God doesn't allow any impatience God may have with us to devolve into dissatisfaction and, and ultimately to our destruction. Instead, God loves us. Came into this world not to condemn the world but the, so we might be saved. Again, good news. In the season of Lent, where we talk about repentance, repentance that leads to forgiveness, forgiveness that goes hand in hand with redemption. We hear two stories that remind us that God has been a redeeming God through all out time. God hasn't given up on humanity. Even though we can become disgruntled, have disbelief. This scriptures, these scriptures today invite us to once again trust in God, an active trust, lived out through love and care for one another. So here's a question. We are in this year. Has dissatisfaction with the way you are living led to new life? For that is the story of 
we heard in the Gospel of John, that we may have new life in Christ. Where in this year have you led to new life and new ways of living that are healthier? Where in your family? How about your work life and in your faith life? Where have you experienced new life? I remind us to keep our eyes looking up. Up to a God who loves us, who has loved us so much that that God hasn't given up on us. That God has come into this world and through suffering and through pain set a model of redemptive love for us. May we embrace that new life by not just trying to go back to the things that once were a year ago, but instead grabbing hold and tight to the new ways of being and living and loving that God has given us in the last 12 months. May we be satisfied with that new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me uh, share the screen here so that I can uh, show you the other questions that go with just reflecting this week. With what, if anything, are you dissatisfied in your everyday life? Are you dissatisfied in any way with God? How? Why? How does your sense of dissatisfaction impact your life and faith decisions? All things to consider this week as you consider the love of God for you. Poured out that you might have new life in Christ. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, we move to our time of offering, a time to express our gratitude through our tithes and offering for the ways that God has reached out into our lives. Reassured us that we're not alone. Reassured us that there is, there is a way and we are moving toward it. Uh, we are moving through this wilderness time and there will come a time when those losses that we may be experiencing will be no more. So as we sing our next song, you're invited to make your offering online or to send a check to the church or to make a list of names of people to reach out to this week to share the love of Christ with. Our offering song is We Fall Down.
redeeming God. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Lord, it can become really easy for us to be focused on what we lack. We can lose our faith in you. We can become disheartened. We ask this day that you send your spirit in among us. Lift up our spirits. Reassure us of your presence. Where we fail to trust you, forgive us. Where we need comforting, wrap us in your loving embrace. There are so many in this, this world, Lord, who feel discombobulated by the last 12 months and by life just in general. We ask that you send your peace into their lives. Ease any anxiety that they might be feeling. For those who are experiencing grief from the loss of loved ones, send your comforting presence. Where, there, where this disease has hung on, disrupting life, we ask that you send your healing strength into the lives of those who are bearing that burden. For the caregivers who are reaching out in love, helping others get what they need, give them the strength to carry on and rest for their weary bones. We give you thanks for your healing presence in our midst, for the doctors and the nurses and the CNAs and all those who, who work in the medical profession and those who, who work in the responsive services who, who go out and answer calls for help. Keep them safe. Remind them that what they do has deep meaning. Bless their lives. Most of all, Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for your continued presence with us as we join and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us sing with, with gusto, you are my king.
Go now, having basked in the light, giving thanks to the Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever. By grace you have been set free to do good works in Christ. Glory to God. Amen.